What's good, everybody, and welcome back to the Legendary Memoirs Podcast. Listen, I know I took a week off from dropping an episode. We got 12 episodes, y'all, and I needed to take a break to get myself together and to figure out some things and to come back better than ever. So today we're going into a series talking about the five levels of leadership by John C. Maxwell. This is something that I cherish. He's actually one of my most favorite authors since my pastor and mentor gave me the book and shared with the rest of the leaders about how there is a hierarchy to leadership. And I love it so much because he took it and made it something that was so simple an elementary school student could learn it and could actually teach it and could actually understand the different levels of leadership. So if you guys want to check out that book and go in depth about it, I would advise you to go and check it out and read it and truly understand it. I'm actually not going to go too deep into it. I'm sorry if you clicked on this video looking for me to explain the chapter, give you a quick spark notes. I'm not doing that. I'm only giving you just a little snippet and letting you see how I applied it to my life and how I look at it. So let's jump into it. John C. Maxwell says that the lowest level on the spectrum is a positional leader. He says people follow you only because you have the position. And I looked at this and I'm like, man, this is crazy because the truth is I know some positional leaders. And I agree with it because I know that it's easy for you to get a position and you may not have the experience in it. You may not have all the tools. You may not be where you need to be. And it's okay. Why? Because you can grow from a positional leader up to a pinnacle leader, which he classifies as the level five. So being a positional leader is not a bad thing. You know, sometimes it's good for you to know where you stand and be confident in that. Why? Because the book of James in the Bible tells us a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And you don't want to be swayed thinking that you're this and thinking that you're that. And, you know, you're kind of bipolar. You're never finding yourself in the middle when it comes to your position and who you are. It's always good to have confidence in who you are and where you stand. The issue is that our society today inevitably creates positional leaders it's so easy for someone to get an instagram page and get a facebook page get a twitter whatever it is that you want to do black twitter is kind of one of the worst you know when it comes to blowing up quickly because you typed a few sentences or you said the right thing that somebody might have liked and they retweeted it and then you know flip that and then you go viral and you know now you're this big influencer because you said one thing you know and this is the society that we live in because social media causes us to easily blow up you know just like when I started this podcast it doesn't exclude me it was easy for me I had 1600 followers when I started you know I started sharing it you know all 1600 of y'all not subscribed but that's another story You know, but people started liking what I was putting out and I became a positional leader because now I have a certain level of influence and people are saying, I like what you're doing. Uh, Keep it up, you know, all the accolades and all that stuff. And now I'm jumping into a position where I actually have to steward more. I have to live better. But I'm in a position where if I keep going with this, it's going to draw more people and hopefully people will like me more than they will not like me (laughs) but that's another thing but the issue is that social media and the society causes us to be positional leaders and most of the time we are pessimists rather than optimists you know this is kind of a a different way of thinking about it but most of us like let's give an example let's give an example so if There was a young lady that worked at a gas station and a young man comes in. He says, let me get 15 on five. She's probably going to go to her Twitter or make an Instagram video. Say, look at this broke joker. 
you know, he came here trying to get 15 on his uh, tank. You know, he ain't he can't afford no gas and that, 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 all that. And then she probably go viral for putting that out. But why is it that we can't be optimistic about certain situations like that? Why we can't say, well, maybe he's just trying to keep his gas tank from going under a certain level, so he spends 15 bucks on it. But it's more common for us to do the opposite. And it's, I mean, hey, if that's the way you want to live, then live that way. But I don't want to be in a position like that that's causing me to downplay people or causing me to be all over the place and, you know, not even stable and not really confident in where I should stand. And this is where we have to do. We have to be confident. We have to be sure about it. And we have to spread love and positivity at the end of the day. It's the great commission that we love one another and we go out and we bring others into the kingdom and do the right thing. That's the great commission. And that's what we are supposed to be doing. That's why we're on this earth to spread love and to, you know, bring positivity not bring each other down you know and in this you have to be careful with this because the only issue with being a pessimist and not being an optimist is that you're often heard but you're never really seen and it's an issue because when you're doing all this stuff on social media people hear you but they don't really see your life. They don't see your action. They don't see the things that you have to do behind closed doors. And this is bad because it's easy for us to be living something and it's not what we're typing. We're typing one thing, but we go home and have to deal with our own depression and have to deal with our own shame and have to deal with our own sin and have to deal with the fact that loved ones may not love us the way that we should be being loved. But we're on social media getting this fake love and these fake lights and these fake retweets and all this stuff. This is not the way we want to be. This is not the position that you want to be in. I'm telling you, the only issue I have with my generation is that we are not good leaders. Ooh, man. <laughs> We're not good leaders. Let's be honest. We're not the leaders that our grandfathers and our grandmothers were. We're not those people. We are different. We have more technology. Life is much easier. We're not doing physical labor. You know, we're not those leaders. Now, we have different type of leaders that are actually killing the game. They're, they're doing it right. But my generation, for whatever reason, we choose not to lead. We choose to be stuck in just the position. And we choose to not get beyond that and allow people to get bring us to a level two, which is a permissional leader, which we'll be talking about next week. We want to stay at the bottom. We want to go viral and think we can get some money from it. We want to just do the bare minimum and think we can get by. But I'm speaking to my generation in love because I do love you. There is so much more that we can do. There is so much more leadership that we can obtain and we can do better. We can lead on our jobs. We can lead at school. We can lead at our church, wherever you may be. We can lead. There were kings in the Bible that were like 12 years old. Now, they may not have done well because they were young and immature. But me standing here at 26, I'm letting you know that it's possible for you to lead and lead well. It's possible for you to get out of just being someone that's heard, but then going to someone who's seen and someone who has the action and someone who has the lifestyle. Don't just let your social media posts be the thing that causes you to be heard or seen, but let your lifestyle show that you are a good leader and that you are a good person and that you have grace for people. Sister girl that went on and tweeted about people, the guy at the gas station, she ain't had no grace for him. She seen that $15 and said, bro, he might have just gave the, you know, what he had in his pocket, you know, whatever it is. He might have been doing exactly what the, the Holy Spirit told him to go in there and spend 15 bucks and nothing else. But sister girl said, hey, he broke. <laughs> she took him to the Internet and. One thing led to another, and now this man has to feel the shame of someone who decided to just stand in the position and not truly understand 
everything about where she was standing because clearly her level of influence meant something to this world. Clearly her level of influence was bigger than what she truly understood. But when you take your influence, you take your position and you don't do it right, it causes you to make a huge mistake. And it causes you to have to come back and apologize if you're that type of person. It causes you to have to come back and to repent. You know, it causes you to have to do these things because you have not truly valued your position and truly understood it and did it the right way. So to each and every one of us, what's the lesson in this? I know I rambled on a lot. If you're standing in a position where people are following you because you have the position, there is so much more. So your job is to learn everything about your position. Learn the ground that you stand on so that when you dig your shovel into it and you hit that soil, you're not planting something that's completely out of season. Ooh, that was good. You're not complete. Ooh, that was good. I can't even keep talking. You, I got to let that breathe a little bit. I'm trying to keep going, but it's not working. You feel me? <laughs> it's not working. You have to make sure you're not planning something that is out of season. But if you're in the position, look at the season that you're standing in. Look at the, the place where you are and make the best of it. You can do it. If I can, you can. And I'm challenging each and every one of us. I know I challenged this last week or two ago about the habits. I hope that's going well for you. But I'm challenging you now with something new. If you are standing in a position learn everything about it love it make the best of it and do it to the glory and honor of god my name is isaiah hitchens this has been legendary memoirs it's late in the create space and i am signing off so shout out to each and every one of you i pray that you can like and subscribe and share this with somebody so that we can continue to grow together god bless you all